Hello and welcome to Mrs. Russell's math session. Um, no one has popped in yet, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So today what we're going to be talking about is um, absolute value equations and how to graph them. So here, let's just review what is absolute value. So remember, absolute value means basically how far is a number from zero. So it's basically kind of talking about like distance. So the absolute value of three, which these bars mean absolute value, would be three because three is three units away from zero. The absolute value of negative three, so that means how far away is negative three from zero? Well, it's three units away because if you think of it as distance, if I say, how far do you live from school? You wouldn't say negative three miles, you would say three miles. Absolute value of 10, how far is 10 from zero? 10 units, and then negative 11 would be 11. So absolute value is basically always the positive of a number. So in general, if we were gonna graph the absolute value of x. So we have the equation y equals the absolute value of x. If we were to make a table, so after we make the table, you'll see what the general shape is. The general shape of any absolute value is a v. But if we were to make a table, we'll pick some values for x. So let's do a couple negatives, zero, and a couple positives. So the absolute value of negative three is three. The absolute value of negative one is one. Absolute value of zero is zero. Absolute value of two is two. And the absolute value of four is four. So if we were to plot these points, we have negative three, three, negative one, one, zero, zero, two, two, and four, four. Connect these and you can see it makes a V. So that's the parent function or the basic absolute value equation and function. Now, if we were going to graph this equation, there's a couple ways you can do it. We could make a table or using what you know about shifts and equations. So from algebra two, the value that is with X, this is gonna shift your equation left or right. And this is gonna shift your equation up or down. So since it's plus two, it's the opposite of what you'd think. This is gonna shift left two units, and this plus three is gonna shift up three. So one thing we could do is we could take like that point zero, zero is on the parent function. We know it's gonna go left two, up three. So this is where your vertex is gonna be. We had the point negative one, one on our original graph. So if we went left two, up three, so it's gonna have the same shape, but the vertex is gonna be at negative three, two, or sorry, negative two, three. All right, so looking at this equation, see if you can tell me where the vertex would be. Sorry. So on this one, again, you're going to look at what's with the x and what's added or subtracted. So since it's my x minus 3, this is going to go right 3. And positive 2 is going to go up 2. So again, our vertex is going to be, normally it's at 0, 0, but it's shifting right 3. So 1, 2, 3, up 2. And then from there, it's going to make that general V shape. So it's just going to follow these points out. So that would be the graph of that function or equation. This one, we have x plus 1. So plus 1, we're going to go left 1. And now it's minus 5. So what do you think that's going to do? Yes, it's going to go down 5. Hello. Sonia?
Let's see if I can unmute you. There, now you should, I should be able to hear you. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Sonia. Hi. How I'm are you? Late. I'm late. I'm late. Um, make sure you have a little one there right here? Yes. Well, what it was, I wasn't really trying to join today. I was going to join Friday, but I had to make sure everything worked before I could Oh, do it. <laughs> so you're just trying it out? Yes, because I want to do it Friday, actually, but I had to make sure I could do, you know, I, I had to make sure I could be able to join. Yep, so you got in, so. <laughs> I'm just doing a little test here, a little test drive here. Okay. <laughs> but I'm going to sign up for Friday. All right, sounds good. I'll put you on mute then because I'm doing a recording. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right, so continuing on um, for this one. So our normally our vertex is at zero, zero. So we're gonna go left one and down five. So left one, one, two, three, four, down five. So there's our vertex and we make that general V shape. So this is what happens if we don't have a coefficient. We don't have a number in front here of the absolute value. Now, or a number in with the x. So now we're going to look at what happens if we do have a number in front of the x. So y equals the absolute value of 2x plus 4 plus 5. So that has this general form, y equals mx plus b, which that might look familiar to some of you. So we have the m, the b, and the c. So to find the vertex, you're going to do negative b over m, and then the y point will be the c value. So in the, this case up here at the top, m would be 2, b would be 4, and c would be 5. So our vertex is the opposite of b over m. So the opposite of 4 is negative 4 over m, which is 2, so negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2, and then our c is 5. So that is where our vertex would be. All right, so we said our vertex was at negative 2, 5, so you're going to put that in. And then from there, you want to make pick a couple values below that value and then a couple above it. So I'm going to go um, negative 4, negative 6, 0, 2. And now we're just going to figure out what would the y be that would match those. So if I had negative 6, negative 6, or so 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, plus 4 is negative 8, but the absolute value would be 8 plus 5 is 13. Now we're gonna plug in negative four for x. So two times negative four is negative eight, plus four is negative four, but the absolute value is four, add five, nine. If we did negative two, just to check, two times negative two is negative four, plus four is zero, the absolute value of zero is zero, plus five is five. Zero, two times zero plus four is four, the absolute value of four is four, plus five is nine, and then two. Two times two is four, plus four is eight. Absolute value of eight is eight, plus five is 13. So now we can plot these points. So I'm actually gonna go by twos. We have negative 6, 13, which would be 10 right here. Negative 4, so 2, 4, 9. 0, or sorry, negative, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, negative 4, 9. Negative 2, 5. 
zero nine and two thirteen. So you can see it still makes that V shape, but what did that two do? It shrunk it, made it skinnier. So it narrowed the shape of the V. All right, so we're gonna do another one like that. So y equals the absolute value of three x minus six plus two. So what is our m? So m is remember what's in front of x. B is the number here, and since it's minus six, it'd be negative six. And c is the plus two. So our vertex is the opposite of B, so six over M, which is three, and then the C value. So that comes out to be two, two. So that's our vertex. All right, so then pick a couple values below that. So I'm gonna do one, zero, and then three, four above that. So if I plug in one for X, we do three times one is three. Minus six is negative three, but the absolute value would be three plus two is five. Zero, three times zero is zero minus six, negative six. The absolute value is six plus two is eight. Three, three times three is nine, minus six is three. Absolute value is three plus two is five. And then four, three times four is 12, minus six is six. Absolute value is six, plus two is eight. So then we can go ahead and graph these. So we had two, two is our vertex. And we had eight, five. So now we can go ahead and plot these points. And I'll use a different color just so we can see it. So we have zero, eight. So again, I'm gonna go by twos. One, five, so one, if I go by twos would be here. Two, two, three, five, and four, eight. So again, you can see that this is a V shape and it is thinner. All right, and then I'm just going to show you that you can also graph these using Desmos. So now I'm gonna share with you um, Chrome or the internet. So you can go to Desmos, D-E-S dot com. All right, and then you can just type in your equation. So we, if we go back to one of the ones we just graphed, we had y equals, and then down here is this keyboard, which you can click, so it's down here in the left corner. We wanted absolute values, so see here are the bars. It was three x minus six, and then outside, was the, my screen just went away, so let me pull that back up here. So you can see right now the vertex is at two zero, but now when I add a plus something,
So it was plus two. So you can see there's that vertex at two, two, and you can move along this if you want to find some other key points, if you click, so it gives you points all on this line. So like when X is, and you can zoom out, you can drag the axes. So here, when X was a point right here, we have, looks like 6, 14. And again, you can graph. So you, this is very useful to graph any equation that you would like. Um, let's just change the X. Let's change it to 2, 8, minus 4. So you can see here the vertex is at four, negative four. So there's where that negative four comes in. And using the negative B over M, so it'd be eight over two, or the opposite would be eight over two. So that's how you get that four. So this is a great tool. So you can see different points on the graph. You can see how if I change a value, what's that do to the graph? And you can kind of play with this. So Desmos is a great tool to graph any function, not just absolute, absolute value functions. All right, well, thank you for taking the time to watch this. Hope you learned a little bit more about absolute value functions, how to graph them. Um, this is usually comes from algebra two. So um, if you're in algebra, you might not have seen the graphs of these yet. All right, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions that I can help you with. Feel free to message me or email me. And have a great night.